pleasant day to everyone for today we are going to start the course of strategic marketing management so let's get started that this module was developed in Bulacan State University uh, in response to the remote modular uh, learning and remote printed learning needs of the university so in this lesson we will be covering three topics which are the nature of change the responsibilities of a business and strategic perhaps one of the best ways to expound on a complex business topic such as strategic marketing management is to use scientific um, parallelisms and as we start this course we are going to use some scientific explanations in order for us to really understand what the topic is all about. According to entropy or the second law of thermodynamics, all matters lose energy. And this is natural for all types of objects. There's a time wherein the level of energy is high and then it will go down. In the same manner, an organization will reach its peak and then it will go down from organization down to this organization hot objects will become cold objects and everything that is thrown up must eventually come down now all valuable things may lose their value over time because people will get tired healthy people will get sick and all peoples will grow uh, all humans would grow old and um, we will naturally depart this vessel that we have like things that will eventually break down or get worn out or will undergo maintenance in the same manner people will uh, feel tired they will feel exhausted we will all feel the need for resting periods and that is the reason why people can't work seven days straight there must be periods for rest day as the old saying goes, even God rested for the seventh day during the time of the creation. So this is the universal law of the entropy or the second law of thermodynamics. The law of entropy or the law of thermodynamics. Um, we can all agree in one certain fact that everything must come to an end. Even businesses, human beings will all someday cease to exist. Um, Humans, as well as corporations, though limited by time, ensures continuity by passing on the genetic material to descendant objects, systems, processes, and ideas. Um, one famous tech company, which is known as Apple, um, it was founded by Steve Jobs uh, during the 1970s. And um, we can all agree and attest to the success of this company uh, which is why even though Steve Jobs is already gone um, the company is still producing new innovations and new products such as um, iPhone uh, 12 one of their latest products and um, Apple uh, HomePod and many more so though Steve Jobs is already gone the products and the designs that he has um, spearheaded uh, are still being used today and are still being continued as of today. To continue our introduction, we can also use um, Albert Einstein's uh, theory in parallel to business, such as his law or theory of relativity. How does it apply to business enterprises? Um, according to the theory of relativity, any object that exists in space-time warps that space-time continuum and it proves that even light follows the path of the distortion in space and time in a solar eclipse einstein proved that through empirical observations light from the sun and stars followed the curvature to put it simply the theory of relativity says that objects influence all other objects in space and time and in the same manner we can say that businesses or the activities of many corporations many businesses impact 
all other small businesses and players surrounding it. Um, we can use that principle and put it in the perspective of let, um, a local company like, for example, PLDT, the largest telecommunications company in the Philippines. Um, there was a time when it has absorbed several companies or actually many companies, one of which is Multisys, which was acquired sometime in uh, 2006 for $2.16 billion. Um, Multisys is uh, responsible for all the software and technological breakthroughs that PLDT has done. Um, it can also be applied for Jollibee, which has acquired Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf last year for $350 million uh, US dollars. And apart from that, Jollibee is uh, very much known for its uh, relentless um, acquisition of its competition like Mang Inasal, Red Ribbon, Greenwich Chow King, so on and so forth. And um, one more example we can use for this is uh, Google. Uh, we may all know that YouTube is um, a part of Google where in fact YouTube was once independent from Google. And um, it was purchased for $1.65 billion by Google because it has seen its um, potential. And true enough, YouTube today serves as the second largest um, search engine in the world. So uh, I just give it time to process. YouTube is uh, what's being used nowadays to search for most things. Like if you would like to learn something, you would like to see something, or you just want to be entertained, people go directly to YouTube. So going to the point, business objects must ideally move in their space and time continuum if we would relate this to the theory of relativity. Um, let's say the business has an objective and that is uh, to reach 10 million and then it fails to do so. It only reaches 6 million. Then that means that there is a certain gap which is why the business was not able to hit that target. Um, we could look at this uh, example diagram re, um, taken out from the theory of relativity applied to business. So we can see here that the um, business object wants to go to a certain path, which is the goal of $10 million or 10 million pesos probably. And then it fails to do that, which is why it has reached its second state. And between those two objectives or states is what you call the deviation gap or the problem, which needs or is needed to be solved. Before we go on determining um, what is the problem or addressing the problem, we must first understand what is our goal. What is the goal of the business? And... Um, I'm sure most of you who are already immersed in the field of business know that there are a lot of goal setting um, um, activities that the business can do. Most, the most common or cliche terms is what you call as the SMART goal, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. Um, an, altern, uh, an alternate of that, or another ver version, is what you call an arrowhead business dynamics. So using this arrowhead business dynamics, a business can um, understand all of the things that are necessary in order for, for them to reach a certain target. Like for example, um, here in our arrowhead, we have the corporate structure, ownership, HR, etc. So th these things are very important. Uh, these things will answer what structure should the business follow. Also, should we hire talent? Should we keep average talent and train them? So, a question such as that. And then financial mix. Um, what is our cash flow? Um, what is our assets, liabilities, and equity? And also, 
in our arrowhead, we have um, aspects like business, land, labor, the capital, entrepreneurship. Um, and then we will have the products, the services, all directed towards a certain marketing mix, which will hopefully bring us to our target customers. Uh, interconnection and dynamic balance among the six arrowhead components we have enumerated earlier, such as the business entity, the corporate structure, the financial mix, marketing mix, products and services. And if we would analyze the target customers that we have, we need also to understand that there are certain pillars in what we consider as the pyramid of business responsibility or PBR. So these um, pillars serve a certain purpose, you know, because customers um, will feel or know whether the business cares about them or the business cares on putting out the best product or they just wanted to gain profit. Uh, does the business provide value? Does it care for nature? You know, um, does it follow corporate social responsibility practices? Does it value human life? Uh, not just for its customers, but its employees. Do they care for their employees? Do they have the right sufficient financial capacity? All of those things can be sensed and assessed by the consumers, especially today with the, the availability of technology. And if all of those pillars in the pyramid are firm, then we can guarantee or almost guarantee a business profit or the success of a business. Now, let's take note or understand that our business is not alone. There are actually a lot of competitors out there. And all of them have their own specific arrowheads. You know, they all have their own specific um, compositions, strategies, and whatnot. So it's really important and crucial for us to understand clearly what is our goal. How should we get there? What are the tools and resources that we are going to use to get there? Now, if we fail to reach that, uh, the goal that we have set, then comes the time for us to address the gap or the difference. The difference from what we actually expected to happen. Please remember that when a business fails to achieve its business objectives, it, it, it means that it has encountered a business problem. Now, the problem and its causes must be clearly identified. There should be no ambiguous assumptions uh, and must be made uh, in such a manner that is very clear. And there are actually 10 uh, things or parameters that we can look at in order for us to clearly identify the problem. So to start off, we can look at the history, the growth and the development of the business over time. One particular metric that you can use or tool that you can use would be the financials, you know? As the saying goes, the numbers do not lie. So if we would look at the financial statements, the performance of the business, we would be able to understand the history. And through the understanding of the history, you will be able to predict the future, forecast the future. And for number two, we can also look at the problem uh, of, of the product or service. Now, it's focused on the product and the service itself. Now, what is the current uh, position or rank in the market? What is our current market share? What is the customer's perception of our products and service? Are there products or services targeted to the right market segment or are they? And are we competing with imported products? Um, because sometimes uh, foreign competitors tend to have more uh, power. That's the reason why we, they are able to penetrate and export to our country. Um, another uh, area in order for us to assess the problem properly is um, looking at the several um, marketing mix, products and services. 
And I'm sure most of you who are taking up business and management course, marketing subjects, already know these such as the 4 P's, the 4 C's, and the 7 P's. Product, pra uh, price, promotion, place, distribution, customer, cost, convenience, and communication. So all of these things must be taken into consideration. Four, what is the quality and quantity of the product or service in the marketplace in comparison uh, to the competitors? You know, the supply and demand plays a factor. Uh, when the product is scarce, sometimes um, consumers tend to crave for them or look after it. And when there's an oversupply, uh, people tend to devalue the product. So it's critical in, uh, for businesses to balance the supply of the product, you know, to, to, to be able to play with the demand of the people. And then number five, what is the state of the company or enterprise in relation to other companies in the country, such as uh, Asian region? When you look at your competitors, you look at your neighbors first or those that are nearby. Um, and then we ask ourselves, what is the problem? Why is uh, this product working in China or working in Japan and not in the Philippines? Um, and then sixth question, what is the state of the corporate structure in terms of company ownership? How many uh, percent is uh, publicly traded? Uh, do we have the right human resources and other things? And then what is the seven, what is the value of the financial mix of the business, the cash flow? Um, what particular financial ratio are we looking at? Because it depends on the stage of the business. There's a stage where in profitability is important. There's a stage where liquidity is important. And then there's a stage where in leverage and shareholder returns are far more important than profitability or liquidity. Like, for example, a starting business, a business which is just in uh, the, its first year. Of course, it won't be looking at profitability yet because um, the first year is the give-off year or the year wherein you would have to put in all of your best effort or uh, investment, financially speaking. Now, if the company is listed in the stock exchange, what is its performance in the stock market? Uh, you must look at the, the numbers or the results daily. What laws or government regulations have an impact on business operations? And what is the effect of the global warming and global health status on the operation of the business? Now that wraps up the first part of our discussion. I hope you learned something from this uh, very short and brief discussion of strategic management part one, marketing management rather part one. And um, please follow me on all the social media platforms I am in such as YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you all on our next episode. To God be all the glory. Bye-bye.